time for Disc Physics 101. This is the part of the show where we talk with some of the top pros and ask them to help us improve our disc golf game. This week, it's the Winnie Cruz Dave Felberg. Dave, this is actually Disc Physics 201, isn't it? Yes, we're going to be covering advanced driving technique. And with me today, we have Cam Rowanhorse from Minnesota, left-hander. And we have our right-hander, Avery Jenkins from Ohio. So Dave, what are the things we need to think about when we're advanced driving? Well, the first thing to think about is safety. Uh, these discs are sharp. You want to use a sharp edge disc, so similar to this one. And uh, you have to make sure there's no one around that you can hit with the Frisbee. If you're going to throw a Frisbee and it gets near somebody, that's when we say four. It's a golfing term named four. So make sure that if someone is out there, they know you're coming and you're yelling four if you're anywhere near them. Yes, th it's, these things do hurt. and. You don't know where they can go. They could get out of your control. They're very fast and they go very far, as you will see. Okay, Dave, so we have our sharp edge driver. What do we need to think about to really get that extended distance? The three things, the basics. It's footwork, body control, and arm speed. Let's start with the arm speed. Arm speed is created by not reaching back as far as you can and throwing as hard as you can. It's as you come across your chest, you bend your elbow and then that's when you give your full 110% and accelerate through the snap. That's how you get the extra pop. See, the mistake a lot of beginners make is they reach back as far as they can and throw as hard as they can, but when they get to here and the elbow's bent, their arm's already out of speed. So then it just goes straight up and left. You have to focus your acceleration to the contact point of the release. So that will lead us to footwork. Footwork is very important because this, you know, you throw on your feet. So, Footwork will get your body in a line so that you can use your muscles, the proper hip and shoulder muscles, to follow through and carry your body through it. That will lead us up to body control. Body control is the number one thing. It's all timing. It's a very rhythmic thing. You have to have your arm, your feet, and your body working together. When one of them is out of whack, you won't have a good drive. So you want to, as you throw, you reach back. Then you, as your body comes forward, your arm comes through. Your foot pivots. You follow through, it's all a timing thing. Let's have Avery Jenkins come over and show us how it's done. We'll go through it in slow motion after he does it once. Okay, let's see that in slow motion again, Avery. Here's a disc. Okay, see what he did is he went with his right foot first. That shifted all his weight to the front. Then he put his left foot back. That twisted his hips. Now he will kind of hop as he follows through on his right foot, continuing the momentum, to, and then he'll pivot his foot and follow through. This is how the power is created. Let's see a lefty do it and see if it's any different for us. See how it's no different with the lefty? The lefty still. He leads with the opposite foot. Let's see it. Here's your disc. He leads with the opposite foot. He still puts his foot back, which is called the scissor step, and he follows through with all his momentum. It's the same for rights and lefts. All you have to do is get a timing. Most of distance is timing and practice. Go out to your open field and uh, practice just throwing very hard and learn your timing. Once again, see how his arm comes back and then his foot goes through at the exact same time that his arm comes across. He kept it, and the other key is, you must keep the arm across the chest. That'll keep the disc flat so that it doesn't go up and go left on you. Okay, now I want you guys to remember this because this is the important part. When he came through, it was all timing. This was the scissor step that got his hips. And then when he followed through, his arm started to bend. And then when he got to here, see how his elbow and his toe were pointed the same direction. He released, followed through, and his foot pivoted to the angle he was throwing, which was straight ahead and then he followed through his momentum, so they didn't waste it. When I say waste the momentum, a lot of people that start disc golf for the first time, they get up there and they run, and they hop and they stop. Some of them may run from 15, 20 paces, but this isn't the key. Because what happens is they get there, they hop, and they stop and throw, and it'll go straight up on them, right? If you're good, the best thing to do is start with one step and just learn to carry the momentum through. If you're not carrying the momentum, you're wasting all the running. Dave, let me ask you a question here. 
You've been talking a lot about your throwing arm and your wrist and what you're doing with that. What are you doing with your non-throwing arm? This is also a very important thing. Let me see the disc, Amy. A lot of the uh, people that start to throw, they, they kind of do it like a frisbee and they bring it across with both hands and then they throw it. This is not good because it doesn't allow your other shoulder to get back far enough and rotate through it. So, what most top pros, as you will see Avery Jenkins demonstrate here, they drop their left arm. This means their left arm drops as they reach back, and then as you follow through, the left arm comes up and keeps their balance. Let's see it, Avery. See how his left arm followed through and kept his balance? This is where you could do with your left arm. Always drop it, get it out of the way, and then bring it for balance. So what's going to happen then if I take my non-throwing arm and I actually have it going on, let's say, up here? You'll be tending to throw it more turned over, and it'll cause you to, as you follow through, instead of being smooth and landing, it'll cause you to kind of fall out of it. Now, this is very bad on the back and the knee. The reason we're teaching, one of the reasons we're teaching you this advanced driving technique is for your safety also. Throwing this hard and running and hopping and throwing is not good for your body. If you want to learn to throw hard, you have to learn these three basic things so that you can use your muscles properly and throw without hurting yourself. So Dave, I know we're going to want to see some more drives just in succession so people can actually study and study and study, but once again, let's run down the, the, the top things you need to think about if you're trying to throw for long distance and advanced. I'd say a th th uh, few of the major things are arm speed, which is acceleration at the end by bending the elbow, footwork, which is putting your left foot back to rotate your hips so that you can follow through, and body control, which is all the timing, getting the hand and the arm to work together. Some, you know, some people would say you need to reach back farther. That's not necessarily true. It's all about the contact point. It's tough to put all these things together. It takes a lot of time, practice, and patience. But if you spend enough time playing up the disc golf, you're going to figure it out. Meantime, let's see some of the pros do what they do best. That is super cool. So Dave, is there any last points we need to make about advanced driving? Well, the last thing I wanted to mention without getting into it too far, we're going to cover it in the future weeks, is the grip they're using. The grip they're using today is called a power grip. That's all four fingers tucked on the rim of the disc, and the fingernail actually presses down on the plate. That's called the power grip, and we'll continue with the grips in the future. There's many different. The last thing I want to tell you though, and just I know I told you once before, is the safety. When you're out on the course and you're throwing these around, you're going to throw them farther than you've ever thrown them. So be careful and stay four. Until then, lucky flights.